look at this, guys. Look at these trifoliates right here. And that is big 942 right there. Wow. Wow. Now, is this what you're getting the cuttings off of? Mm -hmm. That's amazing. So this is the fruit on 942. Yep. So we have certified trees that we root the cuttings off of. And that's how we have certified cuttings available. That's amazing. That's amazing. Look at the leaves on these. I got I to gotta check the fruit on it. I'm sure you guys would kill me if I didn't. You only need me to cut that a little bit. Oh my gosh. Okay. <clears throat> see how few seed they are? And they're not pollinated in here. Yeah. But this is why you can't get 942 seeds, is they produce so, so, few, so few seed. Really? Okay. They smell pretty good. I smell a little bit of trifoliate in there. Ooh. That's actually not bad. That's sour. I like That's sour. Mm. It is different. That is definitely different. But really, really juicy. So if you guys live in an area where you can't grow a lot of the other citrus, but you can get away with these and you're in zone six, you're, you know, central North Carolina, even parts of central Tennessee, you could even you can grow these. Um, these are cold hardy down in the single digits, maybe even more. I'm going to grab a couple fruits off of these guys because those were good. Oh, you got little flowers on them, too. They're even flowering right now. Oh. All right. So here's something that I, I don't usually get to do. I was actually invited over to uh, Madison Citrus Nursery and I actually got a tour of their place because they're going to be opening up uh, to the public in uh, February, uh, beginning of February. Uh, they said about three weeks, maybe a soft opening, but by, by February 1st, they would be open. Um, so I got a little sneak peek of everything, so that way we could show you guys. And while I was there, they offer rootstock. Um, they have a lot of rootstock. They've got you know, trifoliates and trifoliate hybrid rootstock, they had fruit on one of them. Uh, and just like US 852 citrandarin, which is a delicious uh, trifoliate crossed with a uh, Changsha mandarin, uh, this was also developed by the USDA. Uh, this is US 942, which is a, a sunky mandarin crossed with a flying dragon trifoliate. And they use this as rootstock, but the funniest part about this is this is probably my new favorite citrandarin. I'm sorry, US852. I know me and you, we, we go way back. Um, it's not you, it's me. Um, but I'm, I'm now in love with your third cousin. <laughs> This is this is it guys and this is one that everybody should have um, They offer them Very very cheap. They're only $14 on their website. I'm gonna put a link down below um, but this is a Citrandarin trifoliate hybrid that's cold hardy down to zero degrees. That's a big deal uh, Just like us 852, but us 852 is hard to get it, you, it's hard to get plants. It's hard to get seeds. And I've, I've tried as, as much as I can to try to share stuff with you guys. Um, and there's a few people that have trees that are that, in the, you know, in the near future, they're going to have grafted varieties of them. But this is one right now that you guys can buy right now. Um, as, as we speak, they have some available on the website and tour in the tour in the nursery. They have they have hundreds of them. Um, but this is what they use primarily as a rootstock. Um, but this is it, guys. This is absolutely delicious. Um, and just like Herschel uh, said, that um, the the only problem is it doesn't have a lot of seeds. So using it as a rootstock is kind of uh, uh, it's kind of iffy. They the trees grow great on them, um, but they grow them for um, uh, HLB, uh, Wang Long Bing. This is greening disease. This is greening resistant citrandarin. So the funny thing is, is that. If you're in certain areas of the country, 
you can grow the, the good stuff. But if you're in the state of Florida, this is the future here for you right here. Um, the only way you're going to be able to grow citrus in the state of Florida, Florida is if it has some type of trifoliate in it to give it greening resistance. Uh, they're working on it. They're developing all new varieties. And another thing is, is that if, you, if you're a little bit farther north, it's also the only thing that you can grow because of its cold tolerance. So this is a fantastic, tough citrus that everybody can have. Everybody needs one of these. Um, you can grow them in the north. You can grow them in the south. You can grow them in between. Uh, you can even graft onto them. Very versatile and very delicious. I got to cut them open. Now, the interesting thing about it is US 852 has kind of got like a little tangy thing going on with it. These are just super sour. They're not bitter. Um, you don't really taste the trifoliate in them like you do the other ones. And that's because the, the, the Sunkey Mandarin, uh, it's a, it's a wild Mandarin that grows in China and, oh, I can smell it right now. Hmm. So it's like a little super sweet and sour lime and this skin is even delicious guys. Now, one of the reasons why I like this more than US 852 um, is because the skin is thick and plump, almost like a, like a mandarin. It's got mandarin-type skin, whereas US 852 has really thin, you know, leathery, almost leathery type of skin. But, yeah, check this out, guys. <laughs> Super juicy, sweet and sour no bitterness no trifoliate flavor and um us 852s it's a little bit tangy this is just sour it's like eating eating a bag of sour patch kids you know candy it's just like sweet tarts guys this is like it's like a an orange sweet tart wow wow now um when i when i did this video they have probably like maybe four dozen uh four dozen of these trees um Go ahead over there. Um, I've got some of these already growing at, at the property in North Carolina. I have planted them before I got to try them. Um, I actually was more excited about the other one, the X639, which is a Cleopatra Mandarin cross with a uh, trifoliate. But, but this one right here, US942, uh, a wild Chinese Sunky Mandarin cross with a, a wild Pont Cyrus trifoliate. And actually, it's not even wild. This is a cultivated variety. Um, Flying Dragon's a, it's an ancient cultivated variety from Korea, actually, I think. Um, so you got, you got two really, really cool old cultivated parents. Not even cultivated, just useful. You know, there's a word for these, uh, for the sunkey in Chinese. Um, but I had to show this with you guys. Um, go on over there. Uh, check out their website. They have a bunch of different stuff for sale. They have different root stocks available um, um, But the root stocks, some of the root stocks they have are actually Citrandarin hybrids. They're you know little mandarins crossed with trifoliates. There's they're hardy down to zero degrees You can grow them in places that have diseases like greening disease and you can grow them in places all the way up into Virginia uh, Virginia Beach um, you know, even central North Carolina, even parts of central Tennessee, guys. Uh, this one right here is, is zone seven. You can grow this in zone seven. There's not a lot of tasty citrus that, that I would say I've tasted a lot of them. There's not a lot of them that, there's none. I actually say there's probably none that are better than this that have more cold hardiness to them. Uh, US 852 was, was at the top of my list. Lots of high hopes for that one. I still love that one. Don't get me wrong. I still love that. But I, I like this one a little bit more. Uh, my kids and stuff like that like it a little bit more too. Um, and the skin is actually sweet and it's not bitter. And uh, it's it's got more color to it. Um, really, really cool. Really cool. Get some while you can, guys. Uh, US 942. Not very seedy compared to US 942. Uh, or any of the other trifoliate hybrids, I mean, you know, other than Citramon. Citramon's basically seedless. Uh, this would be the, the next least seediest that is tasty. And this is a 50-50 hybrid that has delicious fruit. Delicious, absolutely delicious fruit. 
Let's cut open another one. Let's do that. Should I, what should I do? Should I cut the, I'm going to cut the big one. Should I cut the big one? Look at the oil glands in there. And as you can see, I've got my trusty mini citrus butcher knife. <laughs> Bumpy skin, like a little tiny orange is what it's like. They look like they're, they taste very similar. They're like a little tiny sour orange. That's sweet. <laughs> Surprisingly. So yeah. Hey, you can see me. I don't want to cut any of these little seeds. All right, guys. Dun -dun -dun -dun. Wow. I can just, it just, it smells amazing. It just, they smell like little sour tangerines. And that's not that bad. That's not that seedy uh, compared to, you know, the other trifoliates. Let's see if you get them all in there, all the little cuts. Bright orange color. A little bit smaller than a cutie. No, about the size of a cutie. About the size of a cutie. Mm. Mm. <laughs> that one's already growing. This one's already split. Already starting to grow. Cool. Thanks for watching, guys. US 942. It's only one of it's the, the third other Citrandron. Third, no, fourth. Third or fourth? Fourth. Because I've tried a variation of US 852, the Bishop. The Bishop Citrandron, which is a seed grown. Uh, variety of uh, US 852 that's slightly different. So this is only the fourth Citrandrin I've ever tried and it's the best. And currently you can buy seeds of these, uh, not seeds, you can buy trees of, trees of these, seedling trees of these. Gosh, I start eating citrus, I can't talk. <laughs> For less than $20 a tree. And you can, these ones here are, you can grow up into uh, zone seven. Check your map. If you guys are zone seven, cold hardy down to zero degrees. If you've ever had it below zero, be careful. Be careful. Um, but, you know, Nashville, definitely. The entire state of Georgia, entire state of South Carolina, North Carolina, even parts of the mountains, I'd say. You know, even with a little bit of protection, they can handle snow. This is what everybody grafts their their delicious sweet oranges onto for resistance and cold hardiness. And I think they're delicious just the way they are. Tough citrus. Look at all this rootstock, guys. Wow. See some citrandarins in there. All right. This is where the leaves are going to come from. All right. And them being under a mist bed is why the leaves have algae on them. Yeah. But they look healthy, though. Look at that. And this is all 942. Oh, wow. Look, look at the roots on those babies. But you got to keep them moist like that just to get them to grow. Well, I turn the mist off and turn it back on once a week just to water them. Uh huh. But they don't need the mist anymore. Huh. They're well rooted. We do 10,000 at a time of those. Of these? Yeah. Wow. Now, are these bigger versions of those? No, you uh, take the cuttings and then pot them up? Yeah, this is um, 942. Uh -huh. They just, uh, the cuttings are just potted up. Gosh! But that's how soon they'll fruit. Look at that. And that's the cuttings, right? Yeah. 
from a 942 that I sell on the website. Those are the ones that's uh, five for 15 bucks. Yep. So you guys can take those cuttings and you guys will have fruit on them within no time. Check that within, out. Within two years you'll have fruit. Within two years? Mm -hmm. With reasonable care. Everybody always asks me how long will it take it to fruit and I always ask how long are you going to take really good care of it? Huh. That's amazing. That's so cool. <laughs> So all these here are the cuttings, yeah, and uh, cutting. get fruit pretty pretty early from these then, I guess. Well, see, we take cuttings off of the trees in the back that have the fruit on them, so mm -hmm. it's already a mature tree. Those trees are from tissue culture, so they're only three or four years old from tissue culture. Wow. So from tissue culture, it was a tissue from a mature tree, so it's still not like a, a seedling. It's like a clone, kind of. Yes, it's a clone of the mature tree. Huh. 